This is Money Talks. Hi, my name is Ibuku Oyedeji, President CFA Society Nigeria. Join me and a host of other financial industry practitioners for Money Talks with CFA Society Nigeria. Money Talks with CFA Society Nigeria. Let's talk about money. Hello everyone and welcome to Money Talks. Money Talks is brought to you by CFA Society Nigeria. Smart. Uzechi is my name. You can call me Captain Smart and uh, you'll be fine. Today on the show, I have a very special guest, a first class guest in the house, Dobra Egahe CFA. Dobra is an investment principal at Alivia Capital, where she is responsible for the deployment and management of investment in companies. She has over 16 years' experience as in an investment professional. She started her career managing institutional capital, primarily in publicly traded securities at ARM Investment Managers and PHP Asset Management, then transitioned to private equity in the later part of her career. She previously worked at Sahel Capital, an agribusiness-focused private equity firm in Nigeria. As a key member of the investment team, she also worked at Total Energy's EP Nigeria CPFA Close Pension Fund, where she managed the alternative investment portfolio comprising private equity and the real estate investment. Prior to joining Alethea Capital as an investment principal, Dobra had a brief stint at Boston Consulting Group BCG, working as a senior consultant. Dobra has an MBA from IE Business School Madrid, an accounting bachelor's degree with first class honors from the prestigious University of Lagos, and is a CFA charter holder. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's stand up for the first class Dobra Ekake, who joins us on Money Talks this evening. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Deborah, good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank you so much for the intro. Welcome to Money Talks. Yeah, you deserve it. I mean, your CV says it all. Uh, very, very mighty CV you've got there, I have to say. Welcome to the program. So this evening, we'll be discussing strategies to attract private funding for your business. That's our subject of discussion when we return from this very short break. Stay with us. It's Money Talks by CFA Society Nigeria. CFA Society Nigeria, making finance a force for good. Money talks. Money talks. Money talks. Money talks. Money talks with CFA Society Nigeria. Let's talk about money. Dobra Ekahe CFA is the guest on Money Talks this Monday strategies to attract private funding for your business is our subject of discussion right here uh, unfortunately you cannot reach us on telephone this evening maybe you can try but there has been challenges with uh, the telephone line so we can send us voice notes actually to 0817-313-6193 that's 0817-313-6193 or send us whatsapp messages to the same number 0817 0817- 313-6193. You can also push your lock by calling 0700-923-923-923. That's 0700-923-923-923. So, Debra, let's get straight into it. Can I start by asking you uh, what exactly is private funding and how does it differ from other forms of financing that are available to businesses, especially here in Nigeria? Um, thank you, Captain Smart. Um, okay, so when we talk about private funding, I think I'll take it a step back and just describe the different types of funding that are available to businesses. Mm. And so typically for businesses, you either are going for equity funding or you're going for debt funding. Mm. Um, but when we talk about private funding, in this case, uh, we are looking more at the pri- at the equity funding. So when you talk about private, I'm sure everybody is familiar with equity with um, debt funding which is the loan to get from the banks um, or from other financial institutions and then when you talk about equity you're talking about um, shares from your company so giving a stake in your company 
an ownership stake in your company that's when you're talking about equities so breaking it down a bit uh, further into equity we have um different forms of equity funding so you can either be getting equity um, if you're a listed company through the public so you uh, go to the public to raise some funds through ipos as um go through a go through an initial public offer where you can get funding from the public to run your business or you can decide to go private so if you're a private company you're not listed in the uh, in the for instance in the nigeria stock exchange you would need to raise funds from private individuals or institutions um so that is what we refer to here as private funding funding from individuals or institutions and most of the time the funding that comes from the institutions coming through what we call a private equity fund so private equity fund gather fund from investors and then are able to provide this funding to companies um that are in need of it mm. do, do we still have individuals nowadays who are willing to give money to other people <laughs> to go and do business i mean do we still have people who you can go to them as maybe family or friends and say i have a business and a capital give it to me are people still willing to give out money these well, days? Well, it depends on your family and friends. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, so yeah. there, 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 there are different levels um, uh, of, of of funding for businesses. So you have businesses at the beginning of your business, you can't be approaching an institution to give you funds mm. because your business is not mature enough. Yeah. So the people that will most likely be willing to give you funds are people that know you and trust you mm. and know that okay not based on the numbers you are telling them because most of the time those numbers are not proven yet mm. they are not proven enough to attract the institutional investors to give you the funding so the people that will probably be giving you money based on trust mostly are the people that already know you and that is where your family and friends come in so it may not be as significant as what you can get from the institutional investors that is why you go to them get that funding at that level and then you move it to the next level as you grow the business you attract different types of investors so we have what we call at the beginning you start with your own fund when you go to pastor level you get your family and friends to push you up forward a bit and then you get what we call the angel investors these are people that are willing to um, invest in your business for a stake um, and also based on your idea they see okay give me 50 percent 30 percent 60 percent of your company I believe in you and based on that they are willing to give some funds and this is just based on your idea so these are called the angels and then you the angels put it forward to what we call the venture capitalist and after the venture capital they have the private sector private equity investors who are the main institutional investors that can move your company from a, a, a position of say you want to now look into backward integrating probably moving closer to your raw materials or maybe even taking it a step forward closer to your consumers so these companies move it to another level of growth so all of these investors come in at different stages of your of your business basically so for the startup wherein lies his hope <laughs> he, he doesn't have anybody he has not done this business before but he believes that this business is going to thrive it's going to work so where's he going to get funds from he would have to start with those that know him. Wow. That he can convince. Yes, basically, <laughs> that's his family and friends. That's where his starting point is. Okay, so talking about businesses now, um, Dobra, in, in seeking for these funds, what factors should these businesses begin to consider in evaluating the options that are available to them? Uh, in talking about financing here. So, for businesses to, so we've mentioned startups, for instance. So when you're thinking about your financing options, you have to determine what is the size of your business. What level are you in in your growth stage of your business? If you're a startup, for instance, you should not be working into a bank most of the time mm. because the bank needs some track record. Yeah. So you have to consider what, what is the size of my business right now? What level am I in in my business trajectory? Am I mature enough to be, uh, 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 to be assessing, to be meeting banks or to be meeting PE investors. These guys need track records. So that is definitely the number one thing you should think about. Number two, you should also think about the cost of funding, which is also very key. So you, when, when you're thinking about the cost of funding, you have, like I mentioned, debt or equity. For the t cost of funding, you want to determine what is my expected return from this business. You don't want to get financing that is more than the cost of your return. Mm. So because then you're putting yourself, you're, you're setting yourself up more or less. So you, you have to consider, am I expecting, for instance, if you're expecting a business to give you a return of 30%, 
then you have no business getting um, monies from a bank that will ask you for say 40 percent yeah because your, your, your profits are already eroded so that is also a very key consideration so between equity and debt typically equity is a more expensive uh, um, uh, cost uh, as a more expensive the more expensive source of finance mm. so normally you first of all consider your options in the debt market and see okay am i getting good rates can i pay back um if not then you should not even now start moving to equity equity should be it's, a, it's typically a higher um it, like i said uh, it has a higher cost than than debt so we've talked about uh, cost of funding the size of your business also you want to look at your cash flows the volatility of your earnings so when you're thinking about the volatility of your earnings how volatile is your earnings most banks want returns as they want their interest paid either monthly or quarterly mm. can you meet up those expected repayments mm. based on your expectations of your cash flow you have to look at that that is another very important part that you need to take take into account if not like i said you would also set, your, set yourself up so the, the the volatility of earn your earnings how volatile is your earnings is it a business that is very that has very high cash flows very high consistent cash flows so for instance take agriculture for business for instance if you're going into say maybe an oil palm business you know probably for the first seven years you're not getting anything in you're planting you have you cannot go to the bank and say, give me money. And then when they're asking you for money, for the repayment in the it's year seven one. Seven years. It's in seven years. Yeah. So you either, you have to look for other sources to finance that uh, plantation. And, and then when you start getting the returns, then you can now start uh, repaying. So probably an equity fund that would be your best bet in that case. So that's also very key. Then something else you have to also think about is how much control do I want? What is the desired control? Equity um, funding most of the time will require you to let go of some of the, that control. A debt funder will probably just give you the money and walk away. Pay me my interest, I'm fine. I don't need to know what you're doing. I don't need to be on your board. There are a lot of things that um, an equity funder would require as per control that a debt uh, funder would require. So if you are someone that don't like to share, then stay away from equity. <laughs> Basically, so I'll stop there. Uh, uh, but are there no financial institutions who? can fund businesses for the long term like the oil palm producer can go to and say look you and i know that this palm fronds i'm putting in the ground is going to take six years before i, I talk about harvest mm, are, there, yeah. are there institutions that can go no, with there are, definitely so mm. that is why you have to be targeted mm. you have to know your needs you have to target your and make sure you're targeting the right source of funding so like i give an example you can't go to a traditional bank you can go to a normal, um, um, get a normal loan from a bank and expect them to say, oh, you now turn it old on no. So if you are meeting a bank, for instance, banks these days have some targeted uh, mm. funding for some sectors. Like Bank of Agriculture. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So you know that this bank knows the cycle of my earnings. Mm. So definitely they can accommodate. Like even some commercial banks are now beginning to see how they can target some, have some projects there's a, a, some a funding targeted at some particular sectors mm. so they can meet those type of uh, those, those type of uh, banks that have a dex targeted agriculture uh, investments basically mm. so yes but you need to understand that you you want those to match your your returns to whatever type of funding you are requiring in case you're joining us now you're listening to money talks brought to you by cfa society in nigeria and Dobra Egahe is my guest on the program this evening. And we're discussing strategies to attract private funding for your business. If you have questions or you need clarifications as to what Dobra is discussing here this evening, you can send a message 0817-313-6193. That's 0817-313-6193. Or you can just call the telephone number 0818 four 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 zero nine two three that's zero eight one eight four 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 zero nine two three and i hope you get through uh to the telephone lines this is really first class lectures that we're receiving here this evening as far as funding for your business uh is concerned i'm talking about attracting this funding that you're talking about you know you have to be the financial beautiful bride you know to be able to attract either it's this angel investors or equity from whoever from persons so can you talk to us about 
you know the steps that businesses can take to position themselves properly to be able to attract these funders i'm sure there are little things that they have to do here and there 0818-444-0923 uh, is the number you can call 0818-444-0923 so Debra, go ahead okay um thank you so basically strategies you mm. can use to attract private funding mm. um so yes so for that i think what we will typically as an investment professional as a private equity investment professional typically what i will typically look out for in companies are one is your business scalable so mm. when i say scalable is a business just no matter how much you put in is you just you can't take it past lagos for instance mm. so i want a business that once i can put in my money i can scale the business to the end of nigeria outside of nigeria it's able to expand the model is scalable as you're able to build on it you're able to do um if, if it's if it, it's a type of business that all you require is probably uh, if it's a platform you, you know that this platform does a tech platform all you need to do is maybe expand on the platform if it's a business that uh, maybe a manufacturing business all i need to do is expand the production capacity and i'm able to uh, deliver or uh, distribute this product to the end of um nigeria as in is this business scalable i think for us that is a big deal it may not be profitable today but the scalability is very important you need to be able to absorb enough capital to scale your business so whatever model you are creating that model should not revolve around you as the one-man business mm. that cannot go beyond you mm. basically mm. um number two you have to make sure you get your foundations right by foundations i'm talking about your financials so as a third party coming into your business i want to see what have you done and based on that i want to be able to project what can you do i cannot say what have you done without proper financials in place when i talk about financials i'm talking about a profit and loss statement a balance sheet what was your sales uh, 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 your sales last year in 2023 yet to date what did you do you should be able to tell me that number you should be able to see that number three years ago typically i'll ask for three years financial statement i should be able to see that that you've done this in sales if this was your cost price I want to see your margins how have that progressed is it progressing what have you done differently i should be able to see that uh, financial statement you should have proper financials that is something that a lot of businesses take for granted it's a lot of one-man businesses take for granted they don't have financials so you go into a business and you say oh the person comes and says this is a fantastic business i want i could please come and invest and i say okay i'm interested can i see your financials and then start telling me stories <laughs> can't really produce anything no record there is no record mm. for a lot of nigerian businesses and that we need to correct so you need that financials put that in place if you are looking to attract one even apart from private equity investors a bank will require that anybody that wants to put money into your business any serious minded person that wants to put money into your business will require that maybe it's just your husband or your wife that making money without even husband, husband and wife, husband and wife will require that <laughs> yes so it's, it's very key mm. so you need to have your financial statements in place proper records if you can take it a step further get audited statements mm. that will be fantastic any investor will love you for that mm. then something else you need also is structures proper structures in place so structures meaning this business is not just about you. You are not the salesperson. You are not the uh, CEO. You are the same person as the accountant. Have people in place. Have a proper structure in place. This it, it may not be. It may be a lean team, mm. but make sure that people are accountable for different roles. As you grow, you can begin to increase that 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 that, that, that structure. But have that structure that you can build on in place. Mm. This is very important from the start of your business. You are going, if you plan to go far, then you have to start right. Mm. So structures are also thing, something that you really need to put in place. Then to take it a step further, especially when you are really sure that, okay, you want to, you are targeting an institutional investor, mm. you will need a board. Wow. A board of directors. Because the board of directors shows that, okay, this person actually is thinking in the right direction. This person has thought this through. There is a board that is accountable to... The business is not just about me anymore. I'm not the one taking all the decisions. The business will not revolve around me. If I sneeze, the, the, the company yeah, catches catch cold. cold. <laughs> so really, yes. So, but your board, and this board should be people that you can be accountable to. These boards should be people that have expertise that are 
that makes sense for your business not just putting your children in your board no mm. your business your board should be people that are that can actually influence your business and that you can be accountable to you can't take major decisions without so yes what i mean is that i've spoken about now i've talking about, I've spoken about the board i've talking about structures putting the right structures in place i've also mentioned that your business has to be scalable and mm. then very important have financial statements in place mm. i think i can stop that yeah so Dubra, apart from providing finance mm. can you talk to us about uh, the benefits of private funding to a business i'll come from the angle of um, a private equity company a private equity fund so um typically when a private equity fund invests in your business the plan is to make that business better and then the private equity seeks to exit that means leave the business in say another five six years time so if for instance i'm investing one million dollars in your business today i want to be able to take go leave your business with like two million dollars i'm in there for a return i'm mm. in there to make money i'm not charity so to do that i have to make sure that your business is better than when i came in and to do that i need to be putting something more than money into your business so i'm not like a bank that gives you your money my, your money gives you my money and walks away and come back and just get interest no i am typically involved so one apart from the financing i will be providing um I would also be bringing additional funders for that business. So, for instance, after my fund, my money, you need additional funding for maybe working capital. Most of the time, most private equity companies have connections, enough network to attract these other funders. So, even banks that will typically not even look at you because a private equity fund has invested in your business, they would most likely look at you and be willing to give you funding. So, apart, so apart from my own funding, I'm bringing in additional funding. Number two, I spoke about structures earlier when a private equity fund uh, a private equity, uh, fund invest in your business those structures that you have in place you can be sure that you have better structures because private equity funds typically invest in a number of companies so usually they have experience with the best about the best structures across different companies and that is what we typically try to put in any company we're invested in so your structures we put in strong, stronger structures in place for any company we are typically invested in Number three, there's also capacity building. So we come into a company, we look for what are the gaps in the management team? What are the gaps? Are these, are these guys strong enough to take us to where we want to get to? Or do we need to fill in some gaps? Do we need to take out people? Do we need to upskill people? Do they need training? What opportunity do they need? So these are things that we check for. So normally when we invest in any company, you see us planning trainings for the for the for the for the management team and even those below the management team we have to make sure that everybody is able to run with the vision what are we looking to do we need this company to be better mm. than when we came in so mm. upskilling the team is also very important to us so and also and uh, last thing i'll touch on is that we also typically strengthen the board mm. so i mentioned board before most of the time you think you know people but bring in a private equity fund <laughs> yeah. and you'll find out that, okay, you really don't know as much people as you think. Yeah. And then, okay, I think there was one more, one more thing I would add is our the network. So now you are not, like I mentioned, you think you know people. So now you are not just a one-man business. You are bringing a group of people yeah. that know different people with your regulators, with the uh, with, with, with even uh, your suppliers. I think, oh, this supplier, they will tell you about another supplier that you never thought of that will be giving you the best rate. Customers, so we link people up, we link our businesses up with better with partners on the customer side on the supplier side on the regulator side so these connections these networks are things that we also bring on board to any business that we also invest mm. in the brothers just a minute left on the clock on the program and i'd like you to just give me some bullet points you know talking about um, trust and credibility before somebody can put their money in your business they must trust you and before they can trust you, you must have credibility. So talk to us about the strategies a business can, can use to establish trust and credibility so they can attract uh, potential investors. I think what comes to my mind is one word, really, transparency. Mm. So as much as possible, I am backing the individual in the business. So a lot of time you think you're investing in the business. You're really investing in a person. Because I'm investing in you, you need to be as transparent as possible. And that transparency, the way you show it is starting with your financials, for instance. So you find out that we have found companies in Nigeria here that will have two books. <laughs> so one yeah. book for the investor, one book for one real book. No. 
So you need to be transparent. We need to know that what you're showing us is what the real state of the company is. You need to be able to see a private equity funder as a partner in the business because really we are partners. Like I said, we are not putting in money to walk away with the interest. We are putting in money to build the business basically. So you, we must be seen as partners. So you have to be as transparent as possible on the financials, on your strategies, on your needs. What would take you to the next level? What do you need from me? So for me, it circles around transparency being as transparent as possible to your private equity funder that is what they need to be able to show that is what you need to use to show your credibility give me my the right financials give me the report when i require it tell me what is going on something happened i should not be finding out from a third party Hmm. i should know that this person that i'm backing is able to trust me enough to call me and let me know what is going on and to even seek my help so basically i think being transparent is what is key Dobra Egahe CFA has been the guest on the program this evening and she's been discussing here strategies to attract private funding for your business. Dobra, thank you very much thank for you. this first class lecture <laughs> you have given to us this evening. Uh, we appreciate you and we hope to have you again on the program in no distant time. Thank you very much. That's our package for today. Please do join us again next time. Till then, make sure you grow with CFA. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Money Talks, hosted by the CFA Society Nigeria. Stay connected with us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, X, and YouTube at CFA Society Nigeria. Follow us for more financial insights and updates. Keep a date with us next time.